Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest new series here for my YouTube channel. I had mentioned and teased this the last video or so, and it was about me bringing up a whole new series, something that I would add on to all the other series that I'll talk about here already. The main reason for it is there's a couple of subjects that I just find so fascinating that I want to share with everyone here, but they don't necessarily fall under some of my other categories. So they're not on the urban legend side, they're not under the cryptid side, UFOs, um, basically the stuff that you uh, that, that is already pretty popular within my series of videos. So I decided to create a new one here to share them and honestly um, some of the urban legends possibly would have fallen under this new series as well. So I decided let's go ahead, I'll just create it, see how it goes, see where things fall and then if it gets popular enough then I'll continue it. And basically the new series that I have is called Mysteries and Oddities and it is what it is. It's me coming up with some of the kookiest, craziest, zaniest, most interesting stuff that I find at least captivating that I'm hoping to share with you here and hopefully you find it as captivating as well. For example, some of the future stuff that I'll talk about has to do with stuff that is mysterious or stuff that stands out, hence an oddity. Like for example, there was that case of D.B. Cooper. He was that mysterious man who stole all that money, jumped out of a plane, and to this day apparently has never been found. So hopefully I'll talk about that too. Also, I'll talk about the largest known item in the universe. There's an actual term for it too. And the size of this, I mean, this it'll definitely give you awe and wonder when it comes to just how tiny we truly are. Also, I'll discuss about those noises heard around the world. Um, there was also, uh, like, uh, I guess in the real world, there was that case of those mysterious, I guess, exploding cars in the 70s. I think there was even one where it turns out where the news was actually fabricating or faking some of the results. Um, and it makes you wonder, like, why they would do that. So I'll talk about that. Another thing that comes to mind was I remember reading an article on the science side and it had to do with a mysterious uh, floating ball of gas that's traveling somewhere in the universe. It is a gigantic heated ball of gas. I think it was the size of like not a, not a galaxy but it was the size of like almost a solar system and it's fascinating to think that something that large superheated um, would be floating out there in this in this universe and that's something that I would share I would love to share with you too so as far as the inaugural video it has to do with a term that is so fascinating to me because it is a physical number it can actually exist but at the same time it cannot and the reason for it is because if it were to exist it would actually be larger than the universe itself so how can something exist when it's larger than the actual universe so that's why I wanted to create it here I think it's the most perfect example when it comes to mysteries and oddities and it has to do with the number known as a Google Plex so if you've never heard of a Google Plex I'll give all the information here and then hopefully you'll find it as fascinating as I did. So, so what is a Googleplex? It is the largest known number. Now, actually, of course, in like infinity is is larger, but this is an actual term. Like this is an actual known physical number. In other words, there's a there's a specific term for it. Infinity is more abstract. Um, this is a, in case an actual number. It's one followed by a certain set of zeros, while infinity is just continuous. So uh, Google Plex, if you truly wanted to know what it is, it's 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 100. And the way it was created was, it was done by a guy named Edward Kasner. Um, he was a mathematician and he published a book called Mathematics and the Imagination. So what a perfect title for this book because again it, it goes with the idea that this is a mathematical number that can only truly exist in the imagination and yet it does exist. So that's what again what I find so so fascinating. And ironically it was his nephew by the name of Milton Sirota that came up with the term. So that he uh, Milton current coined the, uh, coined the term Google so uh, which is 10 to the power of 100 and then he also coined the term Google Plex which is again 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 100 so it's it's uh, 
it's a it's one followed by a Google of zeros if you truly wanted to spell it out a certain way. Now, as far as the number and how it can exist and can't exist at the same time has to do with this. If you were to take, let's say, an uh, average one in a book and then follow it by zeros, in your average book, you would have a lot of zeros, right? I mean, if it's 400 pages or so and it's your average book in terms of size, then you would have about 10 to the power of 6 zeros. That's a lot, right? But you can fill the entire earth with those books and you would still not even come close to having the number of zeros needed for a Googleplex. That's how large it is. Now, we're just talking about the earth now. If you stretch it, let's say you were to fill the entire volume between here and let's say Mars in terms of those very same books, all filled with zeros on them, you would still not even become close. I mean, you're not even like a breath away from even getting close. I mean, you are still a microcosm when it comes to the size of this. Now, let's expand that volume. Let's say you decided to fill the entire solar system one big giant circle with books. Uh, the average book, again, pr go to uh, Barnes & Noble, pick up a book, fill it with zeros, multiply that um, fill it within the entire solar system, and you would still not even come close. And this is because when it comes to the 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 100, if you were to take the average number of atoms, let's say um, th it was something along the lines that I saw, that stated that the the number of atoms in the known universe and you were to calculate it and this is all just pure estimate then you're looking at the 10 to the power of 78 that is the observable universe now I don't know exactly how much it would be for the unobservable universe but that gives you an idea 10 to the power of 78 is still a fraction of 10 to the power of 10 to the power of a hundred so again Take those books, fill in the galaxy with those books, you're not even close. Fill in all the closer galaxies, you're still not even close. Fill in everything within the observable universe, and you are still not even close to, to, to writing out the entire set of zeros. It is so amazing to think about that size when it comes to the Google Plex. That being said, though, I did find this, and this is pretty neat. It's a website called googleplexwrittenout.com. Pretty straightforward, right? And someone there has decided to give it a task, and they would actually create and write out the entire Google Plex. And it looks like they've done it. And the way they've done it is they've created it as volumes so they created a volume each volume contains uh, a certain number of zeros and then there are ten to a bunch of zeros volumes and the way they did it was you can click on any of those volumes and it stretches out to ten followed by a whole bunch of zeros volumes and you can click on it it'll bring up a PDF file and within it, it'll just be a bunch of zeros. So they kind of cheated a little bit because, again, the way um, it was described earlier was if it was a physical book, one followed by all those zeros, then all the space in the universe wouldn't be enough to cover. But here, you don't need that space because the way this guy did it, ingeniously did it, was because it's a website and you can just click on the article and then bring up a PDF file, that PDF file doesn't take up any space. So it'll actually just be created from scratch over and over again each time you bring up a new volume. So kind of an ingenious way to go around it. It would be no different than just writing 10 to the 10 to 100. You just wrote a Googleplex. But in this case, he took it a little bit further and then stretched it out into actual volumes. But those volumes are all digital. They're online. You just click on one and it brings it up and then that's it. So that's how they were able to get around it. But it was interesting to see that that, that was done. Also, in terms of, I guess, giving nods and then giving homages to uh, Googleplex, there are various places that have created names after the Google Play. The Simpsons, for example, did one it looks like one of their theaters is called the Google Plex and then um, and then you may see some other pictures of that here too but yes when it comes to these uh, mysterious term known as the Google Plex I've wanted it to be the inaugural video because what better way to showcase um, 
the power of let's say a number an actual number and realize how well it can exist and then how well it cannot exist at the same time so all interesting stuff so anyways that is all the information I have here on the Google Plex and then be on the lookout for other videos I'll see how things go with this one and then again some of the other subjects that I'll talk about hopefully DB Cooper the uh, mysterious noises the the largest items in the universe um, if you wanted to hear about those let me know in the comments I do read the comments by the way um, that the people that uh, thank you so much for your comments those that post um, I do read them so if based on this information how things go here then I'll see if, if, if I continue with this series as well so anyways thank you everybody as always take care